this is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Inventor down the rabbit hole network. Coming in with another video here. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't subscribed, consider it. This channel goes over inventions, devices built by we the people and also other nations and countries wherever I will cover it. If the news is there, I will bring it to you guys if, it, if it's in my realm of things that I like. Okay, so today we're going over three devices made by Dyson, the vacuum cleaning company. I guess this is like their little side ventures of their skunk work side of things, you know, more secretive type of devices that never got to the market, but they seemed like really good devices for whatever reason. They just they just did not make it to the market. Well, the one that I want to focus on today, but I will read all three of the devices is project name X007 known internally as the diesel trap. Okay, so, but before I start this video, I want to say, let me know in the comments below, do you guys like this style of videos where I actually show the screen capture and I let you guys see what I'm reading? Or would you guys prefer a video, videos where, like the horror stories where they show videos and pictures and their voice over that? Just let me know below. Are you guys digging the stories or do you just want straight up videos or a combination of the two? Let me know down below. Like the comment if you do like the video. Subscribe if you aren't already. If you enjoy this type of content, I could definitely make more videos. Okay, so let's move on with it. Secret projects from inside Dyson Skunk Works. That's the Halo headset, but it doesn't start off with that one, but there's a picture. Okay, so. And this article is from core77.com if you guys want to check it out, giving them their due diligence. When last we looked in on Dyson, it was to show you their UK proving grounds in Malmesbury. I think I butchered that one, but I ain't from the UK, so forgive me. We only got to see half of the research and development facility, namely the testing areas where they abuse the products that are going to the market but what's going on on the other half in the skunk works dyson spends a staggering three million euros on research a week that's four hundred and twenty eight thousand five hundred and seventy one euros per day about seven hundred and eighteen thousand dollars an amount that they're planning on doubling and now for the first time they're revealing some of their research projects that never made it to the market interestingly enough one of the first projects they're revealing was started just four years after the company launched their first vacuum cleaner in 1993 in 1997 Dyson began looking around for other nails that could be driven by the hammer of their cyclonic filtration technology the resultant research project was codenamed the x007 known internally as the diesel trap there's a picture of the diesel trap right there ladies and gentlemen guys and gals looks like a damn cyclone all right Air pollution contributes to approximately 30,000 deaths a year in Britain. It increases the risk of lung cancer, lung disease, heart attacks, as well as asthma and other respiratory problems. Fine diesel particles are around 2.5 microns in size. The cyclones on the Dyson vacuum cleaners can filter particles down to 0.5 microns ensuring homes remain clean. In 1997, Dyson engineers began investigating whether this technology could be applied to diesel engines to clean their air. Initial prototypes focused 
focused on cyclones, but the required energy consumption was too high. Condensing oil into the small particles to increase their radius came next, but the particle size was inconsistent, allowing inaccurate results, so the focus turned to the use of electrostatics. And the final system used an electrical discharge to ionize and collect these particles, which were then burned off in an oxygen-rich environment. At the time, at the time, Dyson had no plans to make a car, all too similar to James Dyson's battle with the vacuum cleaner bag market. Manufacturers were not interested in the technology, instead turning to ceramic filters. Diesel engines now use particulate filters which clog and as a result drop in performance the clogging particles are regularly burned off to improve efficiency so far so conventional yes but in 2001 they deviated quite a bit from cyclones with a secret so that, that's one of the devices. Now we're going into another device. And and I want to add something on to the, to the other device. To the X007. Uh, known internally as the diesel trap. It worked. It, it, it flat out worked. Okay, so it took the pollutants out of the engine. It took the pollutants out of the engine before it was pushed out into the air. Into the air that we breathe on this planet. So that just proves right there how sick this world is and i don't even think it increased efficiency all it did was eliminate pollution and somebody higher up in the government in the elite in the globalist power structure did not want that released for whatever reason just a little bit of a uh, food for thought didn't even increase the mileage it just took the pollutants out and they wouldn't even let that come to market gee i wonder why Okay, so moving on to this next device, which I think I'm going to read over here because it mentions their watch on this site, and this website is CNET.com. Okay, so Dyson Halo N066 Smart Glasses and Watch. The And here's a picture of one of the guys wearing the glasses, the smart glasses. Okay, Dyson Halo N066 Smart Glasses and Watch. The N066 was a full-color 3D augmented reality headset that Dyson started working on in 2001. It projected a 10-inch display about 1 meter, 3.3 feet in front of you and let you select among a list of applications. Sound familiar? Sure. The technology we're producing nowadays, but that, this was back in the day. The headset... And 3.3 feet, that's quite big. That's not augmented reality. That's more like, well, I guess it would technically still be augmented reality. But nowadays, we don't give that much of a bang for your buck. Nobody's producing 3-foot augmented reality diameter displays. You know, it's just what's in front of the little lens or whatever. But yeah, so moving on. The headset relied on a pocket-sized computer to give you information about things in your immediate area. Through audio and visual prompts, it helped wearers perform tasks like reading emails. A virtual keyboard also allowed you to write emails on any surface. You could disconnect the portable computer, dock it, and use it as a desktop computer of sorts. The controller is another hardware component of N066. It was designed to be worn on the wrist like a watch and worked like a laptop pointing stick so you could move the virtual cursor across the virtual display. The Dyson Halo was in development for three years before the project was stalled. The team of engineers were asked to focus on bringing the brand's existing product categories to the US instead. However, tech from N066 is being used in more recent projects. And then just to show you guys some pictures, this, this other website has good pictures. There's the headset, the Halo N066 being worn there with the computer here and the headset. Then there's a picture of 
the front view of the headset. There's a diagram schematic of the headset. And this is also on CNET.com slash pictures slash Dyson prototypes pictures. Okay. Very cool. The Halo N066. There it is. There's its keyboard. The the watch. Very cool. Control pad it says. A sketch of the Dyson Halo wearable controller. There are all the little apps you could choose from. You'd imagine how much nicer it would look today. Okay, so. And there's the X007 diesel trap. Okay, let's move on to the their last device. Okay, so here's the last device that they produced. Well, I mean, I'm sure it's not the last. It's one of the declassified ones that they're willing to talk about. Okay, so hydrogen fuel cells convert chemical energy from hydrogen and oxygen into electrical energy. Fuel cells require a large constant source of both hydrogen and oxygen to run, but produce electricity constantly, continuously, as long as these elements are supplied. And there's a picture of it right there. For three years, 10 Dyson engineers worked to adapt a Dyson digital motor so it could sit at the heart of the fuel cell. The aim was to increase performance. The aim was to increase performance while reducing size. The results were impressive. The compact, lightweight, and highly efficient digital motor V4HF resulted in a 20% increase in power density and improved the efficiency. The startup time became almost three times faster. Unsurprisingly, the company won't reveal details of where the research might lead, but will only say, quotations, now that the potential has been proven, Dyson engineers are exploring other possibilities for the Dyson digital motor. Sounds like they may have hit over Unity with that one, eh? Okay. Unsurprisingly, the company won't reveal. Okay, I already read that part. Moving on. These three projects are what the company has designed to show us. And it has made us intense intensely curious as to what they're not willing to show us, right? That's what I was thinking. These are just the declassified ones. The wearable computer, computer project caught us off guard as they were tinkering with this stuff 13 years ago when the iPod was a new concept. What other unexpected areas might they be delving into? Over the years, there steadily been amassing employees with expertise in fluid mechanical robotics, electrical chemical, acoustic motor thermodynamics testing, and software engineering, and is thought to be the only vacuum cleaner manufacturer with an in-house microbiology team and they're expanding the company to the tune of 250 million and 3,000 more jobs. Anyone have any guesses? Sounds like they're totally into the uh, the energy producing and wearable technology field and they're using all their gains that they made from the vacuum cleaner money to put into other way more cooler projects just like Lonnie Johnson used his super soaker money he invented the super soaker then put all that money into energy devices hope you guys enjoyed the video inventor down the rabbit hole network give me some feedback down there in the comment section 
any videos you guys may want to watch or any st stories you want me to research that's what i live for research and development so hope you guys enjoyed have a fantastic rest of your month and year and i hope you guys get everything you ever wanted i'm out this piece